Did you know that most people form an opinion about your website in just 50 milliseconds and that is faster than the blink of an eye? And in 2025, web design is evolving quicker than ever before. So if you really want to stand out from the crowd, you have to stay ahead of the curve. So in this video, I'll share the top five web design trends that I really think everyone should know about. And I'll also share a few that you should probably be careful with. So let's dive in. All right. So the first trend making waves in 2025 is the retro style or Y2K aesthetic. I mean, we've witnessed the nonstop resurfacing of millennial fashion trends like the low rise bottoms and baguette bags. So I mean, it's no wonder that web design also grabs some things from the past, like old interfaces and surprise reboots. You can also see this retro trend reflected in the use of bold colors like hot pinks, metallics, purples, yellows, and so on. Also the use of pixel art, glitch effects, and neon accents paired with some handcrafted elements like illustrations and handwritten fonts pop up as well. And when you blend these visuals with modern web capabilities, you get something that just looks raw, playful, and really relatable. Kind of a big contrast to overly polished designs that are mostly seen on the web nowadays. Now next up on the list, we have micro interactions. Now these are those small little animations or effects that make a website feel interactive and really alive. These can include classic things like button animations, scrolling effects, loading spinners, and so on. You know what I'm talking about. Now these things seem really tiny, but they can make websites easier to use, encourage interactions, and add some real good personality to them. Of course, micro interactions are nothing new here, but now designers are taking them to the next level to make modern websites really stand out. One great example of micro interactions that I personally keep seeing everywhere a lot lately are scrolling animations, which are very popular in landing pages and one page websites. Elements can start fading in, sliding into place or changing colors once you scroll through the website. For example, on Kubrick's website, the red text transforms into a background image as you scroll down the website. And another great example of this is nasaprospect.com, where an entire story of an astronaut basically unfolds as you move down the page. Now, micro interactions are also being used to gamify websites. Like on the Enigma site, here visitors can influence the movement of elements with just one single click or just experience old school cursor changes, all of which perfectly aligns with Enigma's purpose, which is to inspire kids around the world to start their journey in coding and computational thinking. Now, in my personal opinion, these gamified elements don't just entertain you, but they encourage visitors to stick around for longer as they are more engaged with your content on the site. And of course, I suggest using these playful elements with intention so that they enhance the experience rather than just overwhelm the viewers. Now, later on, I'll show you a couple of examples where this didn't quite work. So make sure to stick till the end to see those examples. All right, now moving on, we absolutely gotta talk about colors as they obviously play a really huge part in branding and the overall user experience. So it's really good to know what's currently trending. Well, in 2025, web design is all about comfort and connection with a big shift towards soothing, nurturing color palettes that feel just really inviting and easy on the human eye. That being said, according to Pantone, the color of the year is Mocha Mousse, a very warm, earthy brown that's kind of perfect for grounding designs. And on the same topic, gradients are also still a massive trend in 2025, carrying over from the past years. Now designers are pushing the boundaries by layering different gradients with soft hues or bold pops of color to really create that depth and visual interest. And speaking of the psychology of colors, designers continue to use soft, cool shades like blues, teals, and grays for backgrounds and informational sections. Meanwhile, bold worm colors like reds, oranges, and greens are used for calls to action, or CTAs for short, helping them really stand out without feeling jarring. And the next web design trend I really want to point out today is scrapbooking. Now, the scrapbooking style should make you feel as if you're just flipping through a childhood scrapbook filled with handwritten notes, like stickers, doodles, tape, and little mementos that really tell your story. Now, this playful and nostalgic magic is making its way into web design in 2025. Now take Becky Orpin's portfolio website, for example. The site looks super cozy and personal filled with moving colorful animations and different images of 
different styles. Or another example is this virtual gas museum, which mixes various modes of design and gives off a bit of a scrapbook quality. Now, I really think this trend is perfect for brands looking to break away from polished cookie cutter templates and really embrace something handmade and kind of mood board inspired even, I would say. Okay, guys, now on a more serious note, did you know that websites actually contribute to carbon emissions? Well, sadly, this is very true. An average website produces 4.61 grams of CO2 for every single page view. So for, let's say, websites that have an average of 10,000 page views per month, that makes 553 kilograms of CO2 per year. That is exactly why sustainable web design is a major trend in 2025, just focusing on reducing the environmental impact of websites while still delivering great functionality and user experiences. And this may actually sound surprising, but there are plenty of ways web designers and developers can minimize a site's carbon footprint. This includes optimizing images and videos to reduce data transfer, also using responsive design to ensure efficiency across all devices, and then there's streamlining code and adopting energy efficient practices for faster, leaner websites. And finally, we have choosing eco-friendly hosting providers like Hostinger, for example, and you can check if your hosting provider is green by searching for them in the green web directory. Brands are also leaning into sustainable design to reflect their eco-conscious values. Minimalist layouts, nature-inspired imagery, and ethical messaging are just becoming the norm right now. But of course, an eco-friendly website doesn't mean you have to have green colors and pictures of trees all over the place. I mean, for example, take a look at this sustainable baddie website, whose bold and creative web design proves this very well. It even incorporates some fun Y2K style elements, tying back to what I mentioned earlier that the Y2K style is now trending. All right, now let's talk about the web design trends you should handle with a little bit of caution. First up is one that's been sparking a ton of debate lately, and that is the rising influence of AI. Now, guys, just don't get me wrong here. AI has made web design faster, easier, and way more accessible and tools like hosting or website builder can build an entire website in under a minute based just on your description and give you absolutely mind-blowing results. But here is the catch. Relying too heavily on AI can strip away that personal touch your website really needs. I mean, I've seen AI generated backgrounds or images that totally miss the mark on brand style, picture, mismatched colors, off theme graphics, or layouts that feel absolutely soulless. It's like hand handing over your entire creative process to a robot and hoping for the best, basically. Plus, AI doesn't always maintain a cohesive style from one image to the next, leading to visuals that look like they belong on completely different websites. So bottom line here is that AI is an incredible assistant, but it's no substitute for your own creativity. I mean, embrace what it can do, like brainstorming ideas or generating quick prototypes, but do remember that your human touch will make your website truly stand out. And if you guys want to avoid those typical mistakes when creating a website with AI, definitely check out our other videos that we have on our channel where we show you how to build a fully functional AI powered website that actually looks and feels great. Okay, now let's talk about another really weird trend that I've noticed everywhere lately as well, which is stuffing websites with over the top 3D effects and animations. I mean, thanks to better web tech and designers trying to stand out, interactive 3D elements are making a big comeback in 2025. And yeah, I mean, when it's done right, they can be absolutely stunning, but Let's be honest here. These elements can really quickly cross the line from cool and creative to annoying and really overwhelming. I mean, take a look at this Walker 76 site. I mean, whoa, the animations do look really impressive, right? But here's the thing. The animations keep rolling as I scroll, meaning I have to wait for all of that to end to finally reach some products. So while it is really cool, especially if you're visiting the site for the first time, having to scroll through this every single time I go into the site to look just for some sneakers can get pretty annoying. Or take the Compo a la Comet example. 
beautiful website. There's no denying it, absolutely. But if all I want is to find information about their wine, it all becomes unnecessary and even really overwhelming. And the same goes for the gamification of websites. Yes, it seems fun and innovative at the beginning, still once the feeling wears off of like, oh my god, this is so cool, and it wears off pretty quickly, you as a visitor just end up being really confused about how to navigate this thing that is the website. Like for example, in this Bruno Simmons portfolio, which you have to explore by moving a car. And there's also another thing to this. These flashy animations and excessive effects can really slow down your site, which is super important because if a website's loading time is more than just two seconds, the chances of users leaving the site will start to really increase. So my personal take on this is that we should use these tools sparingly and really intentionally. A little motion or texture here and there can really liven up the site, especially if it highlights key actions or draws attention where you want it. So go ahead and experiment, but just keep it balanced because if a website starts feeling more like a video game than an actual website, it's probably not doing its job right. And my third not so great web design trend is brutalism and the rise of anti-design, a bold rule-breaking approach that tosses perfection out the window. Anti-design exists to just break every single rule like a rebellious teenager would. Overlapping artwork? Sure, let's go. Crashing colors? Why not? Asymmetrical layouts? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. That is brutalism for you. Or even better, all of that at once like the freak mag website did. Similarly, brutalism has made a comeback with its signature bold typography, simple layouts, and unpolished feels with minimal imagery. But here's the thing. I personally, I really don't think that brutalism or anti-design styles are bad or shouldn't be used in web design. I mean, I don't think that at all. I actually think they definitely bring something original to the table and help create websites that feel authentic and raw compared to the overly polished websites that we are used to seeing every single day. They allow us to really embrace that imperfection. I mean, you know what I mean. But you know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to your websites and your brand's goals. A bold web design that breaks all the rules might look cool for an artist's portfolio, let's say, but I think businesses should really, really be careful with it. It's fine, I mean, to take inspiration, but always aim for balance and keep your visitors in mind because no matter how cool your website looks, it's absolutely useless if people leave too quickly. So the same as with any trend, actually play it smart and keep it really functional. And speaking of which, when it comes to functional design, the Swiss and Scandinavian Scandinavians really know their stuff, guys, and I've even put together an entire video about Swiss and Scandinavian design principles and how they can help you create clean, minimalistic, and user-friendly websites. So if you're interested, go check it out right now. And if you've got inspired by some of these trends that I just mentioned and looking for a place to host your website, Hostinger has you covered. Just check the description where you'll find a link to our landing page and also make sure to use our coupon codes HTV10 to get an extra 10% off. Now, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.